rebuilding a Stuart 5A steam engine, part 6, putting it all back together, fitting the crankshaft and remounting the standard. The first thing to do is to oil the bearings. And for this initially I'm just using some thin machine oil. Before I run the engine I will add some steam oil to this mix because the steam oil really is slippery, particularly when it's diluted with some machine oil. So once the crankshaft is sat in the bottom journal it's time to fit the top one. And you have to find out which side is which. This is obviously not right. But when I try the other top bearing, this one's fine. As I've mentioned many times before, if you don't get the crankshaft right, nothing else on the engine is going to work properly. So take your time and at least get the bearings the right way around. And I'm pleased to announce that these feel good and don't need any adjustment. So I'm refitting the top cap and this is the one that was broken. And now that it's been painted, there's only you and me know about this. We will see when I tighten the top cap down whether the joint cracks. I don't think it's going to do. And what I'm doing here is fitting a couple of washers. Now these are copper washers and I just happen to have some quarter inch copper washers. I use them all the time on steam fittings. And this will protect the paint from the nuts. If you don't put a washer in place, when you tighten the nut onto the paint, it will just remove the paint and make it look messy. And this is not a highly stressed component. Its only purpose in life is to hold the bearing against the other bearing. It does not need talking down with a great deal of pressure. And while on the subject of tightening nuts, I'll just mention that I got a couple of comments on the channel from a chap who was having a go at my use of an adjustable spanner and getting really anal about it. I had a quick look on his YouTube channel and what a surprise, there were no videos at all on there. I don't mind people criticising my methods. I'm putting these videos up on here for people to learn from, and if they wish to criticise them, then it's fine. So in defence of my adjustable spanner, I would like to say this is a Barco adjustable spanner. B-A-H-C-O. And for the chap who wrote in, I have more than one of them, and they save a lot of time. The alternative to using an adjustable spanner on all these many nut sizes is to waste time rummaging around in a box of spanners to find the right one. In the foreseeable future, I will continue to use my adjustable spanner as I have done for the last 30 years. And while I've been talking about adjustable spanners, I'm fitting the second bearing top cap. And you will notice that when I put the nuts on, some of the nuts are a little bit beaten up. This is because they are not new, and they certainly haven't been beaten up by my adjustable spanner, but more like the ham-fisted attempts from some previous fitter who's worked on the engine. Whichever type of spanner you decide to use, make sure it fits the nut, and don't put too much pressure on. The cast iron top cap at the other side was actually broken by some previous fitter putting too much pressure on the nuts and over-tightening them. And as I said earlier, these nuts are a little bit beat up, but I'm not building a new engine, I'm doing a rebuild, so this is the way it is. I will live with the wear and tear on the nuts, because this is not a new build, this is a restoration, a sympathetic restoration. I do not want the engine to look like a new engine, and of course it isn't. And so, after making a very fine adjustment to the two nuts on this second top cap, it's time to fit the standard to the engine. But before I bolt this permanently in place, I need to use it as a pattern to make a gasket for the bottom cylinder cover. And it's going to be much easier to do this while the standard is not bolted to the main bed plate. You will notice on this clip that I'm using the pattern offset on the piece of gasket material, not right in the middle. That's because a couple of viewers, including the man who also mentioned my use of an adjustable spanner, said, why did I put the pattern in the middle of the gasket material therefore being wasteful in its use? Well, the answer to that is, I make lots of gaskets and I don't throw away the excess. If there's a hole in the middle of the gasket material, I would still be able to make lots of smaller gaskets using the part from around the outside edge. A gasket for a 5A is quite a big thing, but a gasket for a steam engine such as a small Stuart 10V is quite small. This is one of my sets of transfer punches. And what you do with these is poke them through a hole of the size of the transfer punch. And then you tap it with a hammer. So I'll try this, but oh, just a minute, it won't fit. So I'll tap it with a hammer. 
and hopefully the transfer punch will make a mark on the gasket material beneath, but now the transfer punch is quite tight in the hole, and it's difficult to remove. So this is not going to be the best way to make an accurate mark in the gasket material. In the end I decided to poke a 3 16 twist drill through the holes and rotate it. This will make a mark on the gasket material without moving the standard, and the marks left by the twist drill can then form the centre of the holes that I need to drill in the gasket material. Every workshop should have one of these, it is of course a compass. This is a particularly cheap compass made from plastic, and the bad news is that the end of the compass which contains the pencil will not stick through the holes in the standard. And even though it didn't go in the first hole, I felt obliged to try it in the second hole and it didn't go into that either, so I just removed the pencil lead. And that goes into the holes fine. So I'm using this pencil lead to make a mark on the gasket material. So in an ideal world, when I remove the standard, not only should I have a twist drill mark, but I should have a nice neat circle around each of the twist drill marks. If you watch the previous clip carefully, you will notice that at one point, I physically moved the standard while I was marking the holes with the piece of graphite from the compass. And if you look carefully at this clip, you will see that one of the marks, surrounded by the ring of graphite, is not in the centre. So when I come to drill it, which I'm doing at the moment, I will follow the twist drill mark, because I definitely didn't move the standard whilst using the twist drill. I know this is a little bit over the top, and it's a belt and braces approach, but all these tutorials that I put on here are really designed for beginners, because anybody who's an expert doesn't need to watch them. And some materials that you will find that you mark out already have little white spots on them. So that's why it's a good idea to encircle the white dots made with the twist drill with a pencil line. The circle in the centre of this gasket material was where I drew round the inside edge of the standard. This is not going to be used because the hole needs to be much bigger. But it just gives me some idea of where the centre is to make sure that when I do this, which is measure the diameter and put a mark in the centre, it is in the centre because I can reference it much more easily by looking at its position in a smaller circle than its position in a larger circle, which is the outer diameter of the gasket. The internal diameter of the cylinder is two and a quarter inches, so I set my compass to the radius of this, which is one and one eighth of an inch. That, of course, being half of two and a quarter inches. Then I draw another ring with the compass, and then I fight the urge not to reach for my colouring in pencils in order to decorate the gasket in the colours of an RAF roundel, and instead I reach for my scalpel. And this scalpel is very, very sharp. It's designed for surgical operations, which coincidentally reminds me, when I was a young man, I wanted to be a surgeon. That was my first career choice. I thought, well, it's only really because I want to cut people up when they're asleep. So instead I became a musician. To finish off the gasket, I use a small drum sander in my Minicraft drill and just clean up the edge. Oh yes, and I neglected to mention that this hole in the centre of the gasket is just a tiny little bit larger than two and a quarter inches because I do not want it to be a tight fit on the centre register of the cylinder cover. Now the time has come to cut out the finished gasket with a pair of scissors. In exactly the same way as I made the steam chest gaskets, I'm cutting this slightly oversized because what I will do eventually, when it's fitted to the engine, I will trim around the cylinder with my scalpel that will make it exactly the same size as the cylinder. In order to position the gasket where it's going to be on the finished engine, it needs to slide over the piston, and for this I have to compress the piston rings. And now it's time to mount the standard. These quarter inch BSF bolts were supplied by the customer for this purpose. I had to shorten them slightly, and here I am screwing them into position. I'm using the same small washers, the small copper washers, and the reason for using the copper washer is no reason at all. It's just that I have them, and I don't have any this size in steel, and of course they don't rust. These quarter BSF nuts have to be quite tight, and to annoy the man who wrote in having a go at my adjustable spanner, I include it in the shot, it's on the left hand side. I'm using the socket just so I can get a good purchase because there's no room for the adjustable spanner to do this. In fact, there's no room for any spanner to do this, so a socket is essential. But I will finally nip them up with my adjustable spanner. Being very careful, of course, not to round the edges of the bolts and not to damage the paint. And on the subject of paint, whilst editing the video, I do notice there is some green paint where there shouldn't be any. But before any experts write in, 
I will of course be removing this paint before the end of the rebuild. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.